All right, so um, today we're going to talk about um, volume of spheres and hemispheres, not surface area. We've already done surface area. Um, a quick little lesson today, uh, volumes of spheres and hemispheres are uh, pretty simple, um, and so we'll jump right into it. Okay, um, just some vocabulary terms that we want to make sure we remember. Of course, a sphere is uh, a set of all points that are equidistant from a given point, right? Um, it's like a circle. It was kind of like our definition of a circle, only it's um, the, de the definition allows points to be in uh, three-dimensional directions instead of just two-dimensional directions. So again, the set of all points are equidistant from a given point. That given point is called the center, of course. And so in this sphere, the center is there. Um, a sphere does have a radius and a diameter, um, just like a circle does. Um, and it's, the definition is the same. The radius is the, the distance from that center point to any point on the sphere, uh, or it's a segment that connects those two points. And the same thing with the diameter. The diameter is, uh, is a chord for the sphere, so the endpoints are on the sphere, and it goes through the center. Or it's a distance through the center uh, between two points on the sphere, right? Um, so radius, diameter are going to be big for us um, when we're coming up with the volume of the sphere or a hemisphere. So volume of a sphere. So we're moving away from covering this ball with wrapping paper or paint and moving to what we talked about last time, which is filling this sphere with uh, a liquid, water, paint, whatever. Um, and so it's just kind of a matter of trying to set this up as much best I can for filling this in, right? So we're going to pop the top off here and start pouring in some liquid until we fill it up. And where the volume formula comes from is not a uh, real sort of uh, obvious. And so it's, it's even hard to sort of develop. So you just need to get to it. And so there you go. There's the formula for the volume of a sphere. We're going to take the radius. And now because volume is um, cubic units, right? Uh, for, for your prisms and whatnot, you take length times width times height to get volume. So there's three units that get multiplied together. So there's cubic units. Well, we need to have cubic units here for a sphere. So instead of taking four pi r squared, like for the surface area, we've got to cube that radius to get to our cubic units. Um, and then you see that the coefficient from the surface area formula changes from four to four thirds. Okay, and again, this is just a formula that you need to be able to use. Okay, so four-thirds pi r cubed means we just have to have the radius for our ball, for our sphere. Okay, now for a hemisphere, things are a little bit different. When we talked about surface area for a hemisphere, we talked about how we had to cover, of course, half the ball in paint or paper or whatever, but then we had to add a piece to cover the um, circle that you would get when you cut that ball in half. Well, that's not true for volume. For volume, all we got to do is, we really need to turn this guy around and flip this guy around. We're going to just, again, fill this uh, bowl or half bowl with water and once the water level gets up to here you're done so that you don't have to worry about covering a, a circle or anything like that so hopefully that makes enough sense that all we have to do to go from a sphere to a hemisphere is divide all of this by two or multiply by a half which means if I just multiply the four-thirds times one-half, I can divide those out and get two-thirds over here. 
So what all that means is the volume for, uh, formula for hemispheres just turns into two-thirds pi r cubed, right? And so we dive in using those two formulas. First question here, pretty straightforward. Soccer ball has a diameter of nine inches. Find its volume. Well, since the diameter is nine inches, that means the radius is going to be 4.5 inches. Since we want to know the volume, we've got to pull the volume formula. So just plug in 4.5 for the radius. Cube that. Um, it doesn't say whether we need um, an approximate or an exact volume. So we'll go ahead and just multiply everything out. So 4.5 cubed times pi. And then we'll go times 4 divided by 3. And we get 381.7 cubic inches. Okay. And there you go. Uh, if you're looking for an exact answer, of course, all you got to do is cube that 3, multiply by 4, sorry, cube that 4.5, multiply by 4, and then divide by that 3. And you're looking at 121.5, then you gotta leave the pi in there. Okay? And there you go. It's that simple. Alright, um, now we talked about composite solids before, um, and so we wanna take a look at a composite solid here. Um, standardized testing is pretty good about um, throwing composite solids at you to have you find volume or surface area. All right, so here's what we got going on. Uh, we've got this cylinder, and what this dotted line means right here is that we're going to scoop out basically what's a hemisphere. And this, this point down here is supposed to be the center for that, um, for the circle at the bottom of that cylinder, as well as um, a point on the hemisphere. So we're going to get the radius from the hemisphere from the height of the cylinder. So here's what we got to do. We've got to start with the volume of the cylinder. Okay. So from last um, section, last, uh, last time, pi r squared gets us covering this uh, bottom circle of that cylinder with water, and then we multiply it by the height of the cylinder. The radius of that circle bottom is two inches, so we go pi times two squared. The height is two inches, so times two. Two squared is four, times two is eight. We get eight pi square inches. That's, sorry, cubic inches. And that's your volume of that cylinder. Now, we need the volume of that hemisphere. So we can subtract it out, right? We're going to scoop it out. So that's our 2 thirds pi r cubed, because it's a hemisphere. So 2 thirds pi, and then the radius of the hemisphere comes from here. It's still going to be 2. So 2 cubed is 8. Then we go 8 times 2, which is 16. 16 divided by 3, which is going to give you 5.33 pi cubic inches. And now we've got to take this and subtract it from that. And so the total volume is simply going to be 8 pi minus 5.33 pi, which gives us 2.8. 6, 7 pi cubic inches. That's for an exact um, if you're looking for an approximate 
then we'd want to multiply that pi out and get 8.38 cubic inches. Okay? And there you go. There's an example of a, a sphere and using a hemisphere for um, volume. So uh, I'll turn you loose on your homework. Have that done by next time.